On a sunny spring morning, the crew of the Freedom Star gets ready to head out from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. All lines are in, ready to part dock. Get on the way for sea. It's NASA mission, training for the dawn of a new day in space travel, capturing the launch of the first commercial spacecraft going to the International Space Station. Well, very similar to what you'd see in front of your high definition television set at home, we're looking at getting very high spatial resolution, high definition quality of visual imaging uh, during the launch, uh, as well as uh, high spatial resolution uh, thermal imaging from an infrared camera. The Freedom Star, once used to recover shuttle rocket boosters, is now outfitted as a floating high-tech radar and camera platform. Inside a huge metal clamshell is a mobile optical system on a gyroscope-like tracking mount. During launch, the system will be focused skyward to take images of the SpaceX Falcon rocket and its Dragon capsule as far as 200 miles away. We have several key events that will occur during ascent. So we have one ground station at Daytona Beach, Florida that will capture early events and ascent. And then we have a second uh, tracker that will be located on a ship in the North Atlantic. That will be the Freedom Star that will capture later parts of the trip, including deployments of the capsule and solar panels. Even with high-powered radar, telescopes and cameras, and a team that has had success in taking thermal snapshots of the space shuttle, at Mach 18, imaging the launch will be no easy task. It's like standing and looking through a soda straw and, and trying to capture and see a bird flying through that soda straw. Then imagine that soda straw bobbing on a boat off the northeastern coast of the U.S. and seas that could swell up to 20 feet. The crew can only hope that the weather at launch and ascent is more like a day at the beach and not the perfect storm.